I'm Dump Truck DS. Welcome back to Mapping for Quake. This tutorial is the first of two parts, and it's covering advanced geometry. I'm going to let Bal get into it. And speaking of Bal, he's an award-winning mapper, and uh, he was very generous to share his insights on how to do this stuff. So thank you, Bal, so much for your time and generosity. So without further ado, here's Bal and advanced curves. So Bal here. Um, most of what I'm going to be showing when it comes to texture alignment is possible because I'm making maps using the Valve texture format. Uh, this is possible in Trench Room when you create a new file. It puts standard by default, but if you switch it to Valve, you'll have more powerful texture alignment tools. There's no downside to this, and it's completely retro compatible with uh, even the older versions of Quake, so there's really no reason not to use it. I think it should be default, but it's, I guess, standard. It maybe is a bit simpler for some people. But yeah, the, the more, more advanced stuff, I recommend using Valve. So most of the, uh, the curve stuff I use is uh, based on uh, CZG's curve tutorial, uh, which, he, which exists like for ages now. Uh, and I'll be, I'll be stealing a few techniques from there and applying them in Trench Room. So when I want to make a curve in, in Trench Room for Quake, I always start out with a cube. Uh, and I'm always going to cut up a curve. The proportions are always the same. And they are the uh, what what is used by CZG in his curves. So I'm just using the clip tool to clip off. This is the basic curve. Uh, the really low poly one, I don't use it that much. I'll only use it, use it for tiny details. Uh, you see people using this one kind of spontaneously because it it's, it makes sense and it's easy to make. It scales pretty well, uh, etc. And yeah, if you move it around, it'll make it'll make a circle. So what I'm most interested in is the the more detailed version that he makes later on. So if you set your grid a bit lower and you snap off pieces of this curve, they're always I always do this, so I know them by heart. So here you have a better curve. So it's two up, then four up, one to the side, four up, two to the side, three, three, and then the opposite. And so this gives you a curve that isn't perfect. Uh, like if you see, if I make a circle out of it, uh, you can see that it's it's kind of, it's a bit fat for a circle. Uh, so it's not a perfect curve, but what's good about it is that it scales really well. So you can you can scale it, and at most times it's going to stay on grid. Um, like obviously if you go too small, you're going to start going off grid. But even if you do that, it's not such a big deal because the sections and the points are going to stay on uh, subdivisions that make sense and that will snap correctly with, the, with each other. So, so yeah, when I'm scaling this like this, I'm using the scale tool in Trench Broom, which is really, really nice. Uh, it's got lots of key modifiers, like if you press shift, it's going to keep the the proportions of the, the object. And if you use shift on a corner, it lets you resize like this. And if you do shift alt, it's going to scale from the center. Otherwise, it just scales normally and you can de deform it. Really useful when working with curves, even though it's tricky because you're often going to end up with stuff that's a bit off grid. So, so once you have this this nice curved uh, wall segment. Uh, there are multiple things I'm going to want to do with this. Uh, so if I'm making arches, for instance, uh, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be clipping this into pieces like this, like a pie. So I'm just using the clip tool here. So usually I'll, I'll, I'll group this like as a fun group or as fun detail. So I'll always have one of these laying around my map uh, and use it to create most of my curves and most of my arches as well. Mm. So to create arches, what I do is I extrude from these segments. So you'll have to lower the, the grid settings to snap well at times. But yeah, it allows you to quickly and efficiently create 
arches. Arches and any kind of curve, trim, or whatever. And you can you can go you can go pretty far and uh, on complex maps that have a very circular design. I'll just be always scaling these out little by little and they'll always snap upright and align right and it's it's really easy to use. It's a bit long sometimes because you can't just like take the whole edge and just like extrude it out. You have to extrude them one by one. Uh, so that can be a bit time consuming but some, if you prepare it well you can like pre-prepare uh, different sizes and just reuse those all the time. So I'm going to keep this to the side and use it a bit later. Um, and this one as well, actually. I'm going to copy it, keep it to the side, use it later. This one I'm going to group back into one brush. So this is, I just did a convex, convex merge, which is convex merge. It's grayed out because I only have one brush selected. So what I also want to show is just some tricks for um, aligning textures along a curve, especially on an, an arch is a typical example. Let's say I make an arch like this, make it a bit thicker. I just reset this. So this is not what I want. I wanted it turned. So then I'm using, uh, again, this is possible only in valve texture mode. Um, so it's shift alt uh, right click and it's applying the texture with a uh, no with proper deformation. For example, if I do it the normal way, you can see that this is what it looks like in standard Quake. So the texture kind of kind of stretches out and it flips weirdly at the center because it's going from horizontal to vertical. Um, and so with valve texture format and with shift alt right, right click, it's keeping the proportions right. And so you're getting a perfectly aligned texture along the curve. And then let's say I want this to also be aligned on the outside. I'm going to use the same thing. Uh, if you're in not in Valve, you can't you can't really do anything. Like, well, actually, let's shift this slightly so it's at the edge. There we go. And so now I'm just using again Shift Alt. And as you can see, it's like it's aligned the bricks perfectly. So obviously, since there's some edge stuff going on, you'll get a bit of some weird cases like this. But you can you can just tweak it if you want to make it work. Like set it up like this, for example. Just tweak it along. Obviously, it works better if it's just a trim texture with no like horizontal brick uh, holes like this. But yeah, that's that's how I do all my curves. Before I used to, uh, I used to use the UV editor and just rotate and make sure it snapped, and then do it again. So I used to waste a lot of time doing this before uh, before figuring out all the all the tricks uh, that you can do with uh, health texture mode. Another thing I like to do when closing up arches, oftentimes. Uh, you have to link it to the wall, so you have some kind of end cap you have to create that's going to fit along the edge. I see some people often like spend time uh, clipping and getting stuff right. Uh, it can be kind of time consuming. There are a lot of techniques how you can do this. You can also use um, convex merge uh, with outer brushes to kind of snap it. What I like to do is, because it's pretty quick, you can just create the corner like this. And then you control D to duplicate. And you move you move one vertex, you control D again. Move, control D. And one last time. And there you go, you have a perfect end. I had UV lock on so it made a mess. That's okay, you can just reset it. So that's how I make an end cap. This is the kind of stuff I use to make these kind of curves. So this one is kind of easy because it's aligned to the grid. Uh, but if you look here, this whole segment is a curved hallway and this piece is not aligned to the grid. So it looks kind of like a mess and it's a lot more complicated to make, but I'm using the exact same techniques. And it looks like maybe it's off grid, but oh, if I snap it uh, 
to closest integer, it doesn't move. It's still perfect. And everything is aligned perfectly. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to show. Hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Thanks, guys. That's it for this tutorial. You can find me on Quick Mapping, and you can also find Bal. He offered to answer questions, so feel free to ask him too. Uh, and we're also over at the Funk Message Board, and I'll have links to those down below. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next one.